Bonjour, bonjour, hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. Uh, welcome back to my channel. Today uh, I'm going to speak about F1 setup. Did you ever wonder why Formula 1 driver, when they finish a the session, they run to their motor room or engineering truck and you don't see them 30, 45, one hour um, after the session? Well, they go into the engineering meeting, so everyone normally has got a, help, uh, a headset and you speak with all the engineers on site but also the one back, uh, back at the factory so um, there's a lot of engineers working everyone is looking at the data the drivers are doing a debrief and the debrief goes into three major points those three points are aero tire control power unit so let me break them down aero what do we do when we speak about aero and aero point number one has got delta to map total downforce we've got stability right eye envelope and the last point, cooling. Okay, let me go through those four points. So, delta to map total downforce. Um, you know that team uses uh, wind tunnel. So, in the wind tunnel, you've got a perfect condition. You've got your car, 60% model, and you've got your total downforce. Then you go on track, and the car um, has zero before leaving the garage. And then they run on the track, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of sensor on the car. So we do aero run. They're normally done at 200 kilometers an hour on a straight, constant speed and that will give us the total downforce that we are producing on the track. Then the delta to map is the difference between what you get on track and what you get in the wind tunnel. Most of the time, 98% of the time, the, 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 the data, the downforce on track is lower than what you get in the wind tunnel, uh, which is normal, but that, that delta, the smaller the delta is, the better it is. Um, that is. That is the first big point that you look um, error-wise. Number two, I say stability. That's the stability of your floor, that's the stability of your brake drums, that's the stability of the aero part. So when we, same thing, there's the sensor everywhere under the floor as well as uh, under the brake drum, um, those inlets inside the rear wheels that are yeah, inside the rear, rear wheels between the, the, rear, um, the rear wing and the rear wheels. And uh, we make sure that there's no stall. Um, you actually want to stall from the floor at very high speed because that reduces a lot of the drag. But as soon as the car lifts up the ground, you want that stall to recover very quickly to generate the downforce again. So stability of those parts is very, very key. It, it's great to have a car that produces a lot of downforce when you go in the straight line, but if as soon as you turn the wheel or as soon as there's a yaw motion in the car, meaning the car starts turning, you lose the stability, you lose the downforce, it's pointless. It's not going to go fast. Number three is the ride height envelope. So that is where you want to run the car on the track. We've seen not so much in 2022, but mainly 2020, 2021, you could see the Red Bull with a lot of rakes. So the rear of the car was super high and the front of the car was low. The Mercedes was much more of a flat baseline. Uh, that is up to do with the aero map and the ride height envelope. So stiffer the springs are on a Formula One car, better it is for the aero because the car is always in the same position but obviously it's less good for the mechanical grip. So you want to find the perfect balance between having the mechanical grip when you go on throttle out of an airplane, because at 100 kph, there isn't much downforce, but you want to make sure that when you race, when you're going through a very high speed corner, your uh, diffuser, your rear floor is not too low, so you still have a lot of downforce. So that's how you control the ride height envelope uh, with the springs and uh, you know where you set up the car um, statically and then where it's gonna end up dynamically. Number four aero is the cooling. Yes, it is a big part. Uh, Formula One have got different bodywork depending the outside temperature, depending if it's going to be hotter or colder on Sunday for race day. You're going you're to look at your cooling. More cooling, more you open your body uh, on the Formula One car, less downforce you have. So it's pretty bad to open the cooling, but if you overheat the engine and you blow it off, you're not going to finish the race. So it's really finding that trade-off uh, between oil temperature, battery temperature, water temperature, hydraulic system temperature, clutch temperature, and making sure that all of those are in as close as you get from the limit, right on the limit, but not any higher than that. So those are the first, aero is the first big topic, and we've got those four points with an aero. Then I say tires. So what do we do with tires? So here's my, uh, my map, if you can read my bad writing. So within tires, we've got a few, uh, few things. Carcass temp. So what is carcass temp? Carcass temp is the temperature of the carcass of the tire. It is the most important one, to be fair, if you want to generate the grip. A tire is just a chemical part, uh, rubber, chemicals and whatsoever, and if it gets to the good temperature, it melts just enough that it 
it sticks to the ground. So carcass stem. How can we um, how can we work on the cascade carcass stem? Well, a few things. Brake cooling. You know the brakes. They're going to thousand degrees Celsius on the braking. So if you hit if you use the heat from the brakes, it goes onto the rim. It, we use it. Brake temperature and rim heating goes together. Uh, if the, the FIA tried to ban those those system, but you could see a lot of different brake cooling system in the past to take the heat from the disc and bring it to the rim. Even the rim design, the rim was designed in a way that they, uh, they were, depending which one you wanted to use, they were taking more or less uh, heat from, from the, the brakes. Blanket temperature. Yes, you can, you can choose to, we've seen sometimes uh, teams removing the blanket prior to um, the car going onto a quality lap, but like 30 seconds, or a minute before. So you're trying to bring back the, the tires to a lower, the carcass to a lower temp before starting uh, your run. Obviously that doesn't work in the race, but for a while up, it works well. Then number two, I've put surface temp. Surface temp with camber, toe, and driving. So more camber we put on the car, more we're gonna, we're gonna work on a smaller part of the tire, so we're gonna generate more heat on that part and ends increase surface overheating, but also more camber, it's more grip most of the time. So it's finding that right balance. Same thing with the toe. That's um, most of the time at the front, but you can also play at the rear. Uh, open the toe, you get more drag. You drag the tires down the straight line. Uh, you generate some surface stamp. Same thing at the rear. The rear, it's in, at the front, it's out um, most of the time. And you, you drag the tires down the straight line. It costs you straight line speed, so you don't really want to use it too much. But whenever the, it's a cold weather, it's a very good tool to help the car. Also putting more toe in and at the rear and toe out at the front, that stabilizes the car on entry. Imagine when you put your first thing input, the wheels at that way. So the inside one goes inside, but the outside one where all the weight is, is not that much, but it's kind of pointing, not straight in. So it kind of slow downs the car slows down the car going into the corner. And driving, yes, surface stamp is, is the driver can have a big effect on it, depending on how much slip you put, depending on how much braking demands, how much energy into the brakes or how much into the tires on the braking you put. Uh, are you locking the tires or not? Are you wheel spinning on exit? That's all uh, down to driving. And there you can see through data, but that's going to be for another video. Um, so then we're going to go to the last point, temp. Uh, temp, start of the lap, end of the lap temperature. That's, that's mainly for qualifying. So. What happened and why do we sometimes see car going very slowly on the outlap is because they have a target start at the lap temperature and we have a target end of the lap temperature so we spend most of the, the lap at the best one right so sometimes we start very cold and we finish very hot sometimes you have to start hotter and you don't generate that much it really depends on the racetrack suzuka is a good example suzuka you have a big big raise of temperature because it's a lot of high speed corners a lot of energy going into the tires so um, they, you start cold and you finish very hot and the slow lap is very slow. Some other places, it's a different story. Uh, maybe Monaco, sometimes you need a couple of laps to get them to work. Um, so yeah, that is, uh, that's something that we know before going into qualifying. And we've got that target that we need to achieve. And sometimes you hear the driver saying, my tires are too cold, that means they're under target, my tires are too hot. They were targets, right? As simple as that. Uh, number three. Number three was a control power unit. So what have we got? Controls power unit. We've got the differential. Differential. We've got the brake balance migration. Brake balance, engine torque, harvesting. Controls power unit. Differentials. What is it? Yes, Formula One use uh, an hydraulic differential. So you can set it up, you can change it on the wheel. If you haven't seen it, by the way, I've made a video about uh, Formula One steering wheel. So please make sure you check it out. You're going to see what it is and the differential we can uh, set it up in the car. So we've got three phases for the differential entry phase of the corner under the braking, middle phase of the corner, no brake, no throttle, exit phase of the, co the corner on the throttle. The one that you change most of the time is entry and mid. More lock differential is less differential of speed there is between the two rear wheels, so they work together. So imagine if it's completely blocked, the rear wheels are gonna push the front of the car, so you're gonna understeer. 
more open they are, more free the car is, more it turns. So basically into an air pin, a very tight air pin, you want the differential to be very open so the car rotates well. Into an high-speed corner, you want the differential to be locked so the car is super stable. So we can change that with the control uh, engineer. Then brake balance, migration, brake balance. Brake balance is very straightforward. So much brake balance there is between the front and the rear axle. Uh, typically 55%, between 55 and 62% at the front and the rest at the rear, uh, 45 to uh, 38. So that's, uh, that's where uh, the brake balance is. But then brake balance migration, what is that? Well, that is how much migration we get either to the front, either to the rear, when we release the brake pressure. So in Formula 1, you brake super hard at the beginning of the corner, you've got a lot of downforce on the car, slower the car gets, less downforce you have. So you have to release slowly the brake pressure until you get to the middle of the corner when you go back on throttle. Depending the corner, depending the balance of the car, you can decide how much migration of the brake balance you want. Most of them in my career have been driving with brake balance migration towards the rear. So we normally suffer with front locking at the end of the braking. So more you release the brake pressure, more uh, brake balance goes to the rear. And you can change that shape. It is, um, let me show you. That shape, if you imagine brake pressure 100, zero, and that's the B ball. We start here and you can migrate in different way, or you can stay flat, right? So you can decide, uh, hopefully that was clear, you can decide how much migration you want to put through um, through the, the rear wheels or the front wheels. You can, you can go the other way, you can go push it forward depending of, again of, of your car balance. Then I put engine torque. Yes, you can change how much um, uh, engine braking you get. Um, it's not really engine braking, but how much friction the engine has got. So you've got the normal number when you have when you're off brake of throttle, the, the, the engine has gives you a certain uh, engine friction, but with the uh, hybrid system, uh, we can increase that. You can use the electric motor as a handbrake if you want. So again, in an airplane, if you, the car doesn't really want to rotate the way you want, you can increase the engine braking. So when you lift off the throttle, it's gonna slow down more. On the opposite, if you're really struggling with your rear end, you can push it forward and therefore have the engine pushing all the time the car, so stabilizing it. Throttle response, uh, how much, what is your throttle shape? Uh, how much, when you go on throttle, is it is it linear? Is it helping you a little bit to avoid wheel spin? Is it actually pretty abrupt? I'm more guy that likes the abrupt initial part when I go on throttle, like a good response, and then manage the, the wheel spin later, but everyone is different. And the harvesting how much battery you recharge per lap and where you recharge it, where you want it to kick in, where you don't want it to kick in. Let's say there's a there's a corner, um, a chicane, but between the two parts of the chicane, you go back full throttle before lifting off. Do you want to get the electric engine to kick in or not in that aspect? So that's all the balance that you can find into um, the engine um, department. So control unit is a big one. Please, as always, subscribe, like, comment. Uh, I, I read all your comments, guys. I love them. Uh, please make sure you leave it and uh, and that you ask me what you want to know about Formula One. There are things that looks obvious to me, but I know some of you are curious about it, so happy to explain. Hopefully, I was clear enough and today I wasn't Chinese. I did my best. Uh, so, yes, thank you again, and I'll see you very soon.